Call it as it is, the Sun Devils were absolutely humbled in Lubbock by Texas Tech. This is everything they need to start working on moving forward to get back on the right track. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. A special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day, and thanks for making us your first listen of the day. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your shows. Stay in touch by following me on Twitter at RichieBrats36, the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish that we had better news to share, but unfortunately, ASU dropped the ball in Lubbock against the Texas Tech Raiders, fall to three and one on the year, zero and one in conference play, and enter the bye week with a lot of stuff to work on. And I will be the first to tell you that even though it really sucked to watch ASU lose. I think it was needed. And I think that this team really needed a wake-up call and they really needed to be humbled. Let me explain. A lot is going right for ASU this year. And this is a really good football team. Top to bottom, it's very talented. They're very well coached. They're executing well. They're making adjustments. They're doing all sorts of good stuff. But you needed to lose a football game to get brought back down to earth to remind you, hey, this is still a rebuild. This is still a program that is trying to get better and learn from its mistakes. We're not perfect yet. We're not ready to contend for the conference title as much as we would all love that. We are not ready to compete for the playoff. We are still, we're we're ahead of schedule, but we have a lot to work on. And I think it's a good thing that they got this loss. Sure, it sucks. And I mean, I was as guilty as anybody else of gassing this team up. Like, I was all in on the Sun Devils. I said they were starting year 5-0. and We have podcasts that, that are out there of me saying 5-0. and Those won't go down very well now. But honestly, it, it felt like what ASU needed in this game with the benefit of hindsight. Because in the middle of it, yeah, I'm, I'm saying every word under the sun that would get me in a lot of trouble if I said it to anybody in public. It wasn't a fun time. I was not having a fun time on my couch watching that game. But when I sit here on Sunday night to record this, I'm telling you, there's some good, there's some bad, there's plenty of takeaways, and we'll talk about what needs fixing as well on this edition of the show. Because unfortunately, we don't have any game balls to hand out. Let's talk briefly about the good. Because there's a lot of bad that needs to be addressed in this show. But it wasn't a horrible performance from ASU. There are still some things that were really good. Of course, we had to start that conversation with Cameron Scadaboo. Scadaboo is the MVP of this team. He is, without a doubt, the life force of the offense. And even though you've got some weapons on offense, if you took Cameron Scadaboo out of the equation, I don't know that ASU is scoring two touchdowns a game on a consistent basis. I really don't. Cameron Scadaboo once again scored two touchdowns for ASU in this game. He ran for 60 yards, and then he caught 117 yards, including a 66-yard scamper. Scadaboo is Mr. Do-It-All. We call him the people's running back on this podcast for a reason. It's because he does everything. Catches it, runs it, punts it, passes it. He's what the people love. He is the people's running back. Unfortunately, he can't do everything, though. He did everything he could in this game to keep ASU as competitive as possible. And we'll talk a little bit later about some of the shortcomings outside of him that are holding him back. But there's no denying that Skadaboo plays a full 60 minutes. And he brings us all on every down. There's a reason he's one of the toughest, slipperiest, and just most difficult players to try and tackle. He's, he's just phenomenal. He is, he is good at football, ladies and gentlemen. As long as he stays at ASU, 
as long as he stays healthy, this offense is going to be able to compete. ASU in a game that they really fell out of the whole time, still managed to put up 22 points. And a huge reason for that was Scadaboo. If you take Scadaboo out of this game, I don't know if you put up 10. I really don't. Like, even against a bad Texas Tech defense, which first of all came to play, uh, I was not a fan of this Texas Tech defense, and I would like to offer my apologies. I was unfamiliar with your game, Red Raiders. Y'all absolutely came in with a game plan. You knew what ASU wanted to do, and you shut it down. Props to you. Major props to you, Texas Tech Red Raiders defense. Absolutely blew me away. Speaking of defense, ASU's defense, up and down game. You gave up 30 points. That sucks. Sure. It could have been a lot worse. And last week against Texas Tech or Texas Tech against Texas State, when they made the second half adjustments, guess what? They made them that much quicker in this game. ASU right out the gate gives up two touchdowns to Texas Tech. They are quickly down 14 nothing in the first quarter. And after those two drives, you're you're sitting there as a fan. You're going, shoot, this is going to be a bad day. We are going to get absolutely boat raced in this game. And then you know what happened? Punt, punt, punt. And then, unfortunately, they allowed a field goal before half. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Three straight punts. Two of those were three and outs. ASU's defense started to get something going. And you really love the energy that they were bringing. You loved how quickly they were able to kind of sober up, throw some water on the face, take a smelling salt. I don't know, whatever they did. Maybe it's the classic threat that I made previously of we're going to take your Xbox, we're going to take your PlayStation, we're going to take it out of your dorm room for a week. We're going to take it out during the bye week. Unless you figure it out. And they figured it out. Suddenly, they're able to get after Baron Morin a little bit. Uh, Taj Brooks, unfortunately, was a problem this whole game. There was there was no stopping him. They did a pretty decent job containing the pass for the most part. They didn't get any turnovers. They only got one sack. But they really did a good job slowing down a Texas Tech offense that very quickly could have gotten out of control if ASU was not able to make the adjustments that they did. Props to the defense. There's, there's definitely work to be done to play a full 60 minutes, but similar to Cameron Scadaboo, if you take Brian Ward away from this defense, they're giving up 40 points a game. His ability to scheme, his ability to make adjustments, and of course his ability to get the players in the right positions dialed in and have them execute their jobs is what keeps this defense rolling. Last good thing that I wanted to mention here was Xavier Guillory. He looked pretty darn good. Six catches, 74 yards. He was, in in my opinion, probably the most consistent target in this game. Jordan Tyson, he's still the most targeted player on this team. He is still the number one receiver on this team. But ASU is really struggling to figure out a way to incorporate Tyson on a drive-to-drive basis that doesn't involve him doing fly routes. Like, I would love to start seeing Tyson get a lot more work for the for the for the middle of the field or even trying to get him the ball at or near or behind the line of scrimmage. Just try and find a way to put the ball in his hands and let him do something. But right now they're not doing that. So ASU is trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Well, you've got Shaman Mater, who's up and down at the tight end spot. Uh, first of all, he got robbed of a touchdown. Thankfully, they were able to score on that drive anyways, but Shaman Mateo was robbed of a touchdown in that game. I can't believe they didn't review it. He was still up and down. There was a couple of plays where he should have caught the football and he just didn't. No other receiver has really found a way to stand out that much. Uh, Melkon Stovall, he's fine for the role he's in. Uh, Troy O'Meary is a non-factor. Jake Smith is a non-factor. Uh, Malik McLean. His first catch of the year, guess what? Illegal touching, so it didn't even count. There has not been any consistency from the pass catchers this year, including Jordan Tyson. So hopefully this is a sign of things to come from Xavier Guillory, who came into the year listed as the team's number one receiver, uh, has not been a, a 
consistent player through the first four games uh, of his six catches or uh, he made six catches in this game. He has 10 on the year. He's not getting involved enough. And part of that's a scheming part of that's a young quarterback. Hopefully this will be something that changes moving forward, because if you are able to get somebody else more involved in the offense and find a way to allow Jordan Tyson to keep his role as a deep threat, but then you still have someone that you can go to at a different level of the field, then that's perfect. Hopefully Xavier Guillory can be that guy for you. Unfortunately, there was a lot that went wrong in this game. And this next segment is going to be a lot of constructive criticism, I suppose, will be the polite way to put it. But we're going to get into all of that here in just one moment. This is the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, NFL fans, you can start this season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and much more. All on the page where you place your bets, by the way. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Go to FanDuel.com, America's number one sportsbook, and get started. Wherever you're getting your shows, hit like, hit subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. A special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. All right, we talked about the good. Let's let's talk about the bad. Now I got quite a bit here. There, there's a lot that we need to discuss. And we'll start with the, the nitty gritty stuff. The two things that absolutely, it's just, just frustrating because this is not ASU. They were killed in time of possession. And the conversion rates were terrible. That's the nitty gritty of this game. ASU was dominated in time of possession. One of the things I highlighted as a key to victory in this game was you need to find a way as as an offense to have long, sustained drives and as a defense to get off the field as quick as you can. And the defense started doing that. They had three straight punts. Probably should have been four straight punts to end the first half. That... That fourth drive, we'll talk about that now, got a phantom defensive pass interference call. Now, I'll put phantom in quotes because that was about as weak a defensive pass interference call as I've ever seen in my life. I thought that Cam Britt Taylor was more guilty of interfering with the Chiefs receiver than what Keith Abney did, and neither of them probably should have been called for that. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible, abysmal that Abney was called for what he was called for. He was playing defense. He has every right to the football that the receiver does. It extends the drive. Texas Tech is able to get three points out of it, which is unfortunate because, again, this defense was on its way to forcing four straight punts and get ASU back in the football game. You're talking about going into halftime as a as a 14-10 to 10 deficit rather than a 17-10 to 10 with a defense that is beyond confident. And unfortunately, that wasn't the case. But back to the point at hand, that's what you needed to do in this game. You needed those kind of drives on defense, and you needed the offense to step up and have long, sustained drives. Offense wasn't able to do that. They punted more than a handful of times in this game. And to play into the conversion factor, uh, they went 0 for 3 on fourth downs. Two of them were fourth and ones that they couldn't find ways to convert with Cam Scadaboo, with Sam Levitt, with with the strengths of this team, they could not convert a fourth down. That's bad. That's really, really bad. The, The fourth and ones especially. For a team that's built like the Sun Devils, I don't know how you don't convert those nine out of ten times. And it feels like ASU, more often than not, is able to do that. Well, they couldn't do it this game. They certainly weren't any better on third down. Five of 14 on third downs in this game. The inability to convert your third downs, to extend the drives, and keep your defense on the sideline and rested was another thing that destroyed the Sun Devils in this game. 
brutal, brutal, if you will. Crushing. You've got to be able to win time of possession, especially against offenses like Texas Tech, and you have got to be able to convert third down, fourth down, whatever. That cost you the game. Another thing that cost you the game was the penalties. ASU was flagged eight times for 69 yards, which surprisingly was less than Texas Tech, who was flagged nine times in the game for 94 yards. I would have lost that bet. Uh, It was a ref show for sure. The Zebras had no problem just throwing their laundry around whenever they felt like it. Red Raiders were called for some absolutely BS calls. Sun Devils were called for some BS calls. But you know what? The Sun Devils also made some really stupid decisions in this game. They made some really stupid decisions. There was a lot of stuff that just had you shaking your head because it's like, you know better. There's one play in particular, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, but there was a there was a play that was made, a really good play on defense that was going to end a drive. And unfortunately, the player decided to do a little bit of chirping, do a little bit of talking. Ref saw it, threw a flag, got a taunting, extended the drive. Thankfully, Texas Tech still ended up punting on that drive anyways. But this was when ASU was really starting to get things going on defense. And you have a penalty like that, and it's like, dude, what are you doing? And that wasn't the only one. They they were just, they they were dumb penalties. Not all of them were just because you're talking. Some of them you're sitting there and you're like, what are you doing? You you know not to do that. You know in pass coverage not to do this. You know in protection not to do this. You know for procedural purposes not to do this. And ASU was still committing penalties. The problem is they were costly penalties. There were penalties that extended drives for Texas Tech that kept the momentum going, that deflated the team. That's where he got killed. Now, as far as as far as things that were completely within ASU's control because the penalties, hit and miss, conversion rates, time of possession can be affected by other factors. These two, these two problems, I'll call them problems, is what cost ASU the game that nothing else affected except for the Sun Devils themselves. Controlling the line of scrimmage. Ladies and gentlemen, That is where games are won and lost, is in the trenches. You find yourself able to control the line of scrimmage. You are going to dictate the pace of the game on offense and on defense. Defense hit and miss. There were were times where you felt good about what they were doing, but it really did feel like Texas Tech kind of had their way with you and did what they wanted to do. They ran for 136 yards on 36 carries. Now, keep in mind, uh, Baron Morton was sacked once and finished the game with negative 15 rushing yards. Obviously, that's going to impact them a little bit. They gave the ball to Taj Brooks 27 times. He turned it into 117 yards with a long of 25. So it's not like he ripped off one huge one. It was chunk play, chunk play, chunk play, chunk play. Every time they put the ball in in number 28's hands, you just felt like they were were gonna get five yards. They were gonna get six yards. Oh, there's a 15 yard pickup. They did what they wanted to do. They controlled the line of scrimmage on defense. There were flashes, sure, but as a whole, this was not a good game for the defensive line. Offensive line, forget about it. Oh my goodness, forget about it. The last two games, The last two and a half games, I'll say, because the second half of Mississippi State, they figured it out. The last two and a half games, ASU's offensive line has been manhandled. They they have got to figure out what's going on. I don't know if it's a technique thing. I don't know if guys are just not doing their assignments. I don't know if guys need to be placed in different spots and different positions, because I know that ASU has been tinkering around with guys playing certain spots because of the depth that they have and everything like that. Maybe guys just aren't healthy and we don't know it. I don't know what's going on, but they need to get something going on the offensive line because teams are looking at ASU and they are saying Cameron Scadaboo is a problem. We are going to stop him because this is back-to-back weeks now. 
that Cameron Scadaboo has average under four yards of carry. In fact, he barely scraped three yards carry in this game. 3.333 repeating in this game. Previous week, he was under three against Texas State. These are not elite defenses with no offense to the Bobcats and no offense to the Red Raiders, who I already gave their flowers to. These are not great defenses. The Texas Tech was one of the worst off or off one of the worst run defenses in the country heading into this game. How do you not obliterate them in the ground game? It was abysmal to watch. It was frustrating to put it politely. This was a game that ASU should have been able to dominate the line of scrimmage, at least on the offensive side of the football, run the ball at will, control the time of possession, control the clock, keep Texas Tech's offense on the sidelines, and guess what? You win the football game. It really comes down to ASU's inability to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football in this game that ended up making everything so topsy-turvy. Texas Tech controlled the ball for almost 10 extra minutes than ASU did. You're telling me that if ASU run blocks a little bit better, helps Cameron Scadaboo get over 100 yards, or God forbid, just get him over four yards a carry, that this game isn't closer to a 50-50 split on time of possession, you're crazy. You're telling me if they're able to keep Sam Levitt upright, not running for his life, that ASU doesn't win this game, you're crazy. There, there's every opportunity for this for this team to drastically increase their odds to win this football game, but it all came down to the to the trenches, and they just couldn't do it. Last thing I want to talk about before we transition into the final part of our podcast, I'm, I'm going to make this as brief as I can. Sam Levitt needs help. Now, I understand he has a lot to work on. The passing is very inconsistent. There's not a lot of touch on his throws right now. He's sailing footballs. He's throwing them short. He had an interception in this game. There's, there's a lot that Levitt needs to work on. Let me remind you, this is a red shirt freshman. This was his eighth ever game. His fourth at Arizona State. Give him some grace, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, he's going to have some really stupid plays. As would be the case for any redshirt freshman. Arch Manning threw two interceptions for number one Texas against University of Louisiana Monroe. And one of them was horrible. That's Arch Manning. I don't see anyone breathing down his neck. Certainly not Texas fans. No. Give Levitt a break. Hold him accountable. But I'm sick of people crucifying him. It drives me insane, especially because he needs help. I'm waiting for everything to start clicking for him and really unlock his rushing ability. Because like it or not, right, wrong, or indifferent, he is a dual threat, and they need to incorporate him being a dual threat into this offense more. I want to see him carrying the ball anywhere between seven to eight times a game on just 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 his own ability. I don't want his runs to be because the pocket breaks down every single time. Because at some point you do need him to be able to hang in the pocket and if his first reaction is to run every single time, he's never going to get better. Instead, I want designed runs for him. I want more RPOs, but having the option for him to take off, I want read option. I don't care. Get a playbook from 15 years ago from Baylor. I don't care, but incorporate some way to get Sam Levitt moving with his legs more. That is the strength of his game, and they're not doing it. They need more guys helping him in the pass game. Shaman Mateer had a couple passes he should have brought in that would have been big-time difference makers. Jordan Tyson goes missing because ASU only wants to incorporate him in one way. Xavier Guillory had a great game. He's been a non-factor in the other three. There is nobody on a consistent basis right now in the passing game that is doing enough for Sam Levitt. The play calling needs to get better. The, the, the protection up front needs to get better. We already talked about the offensive line. And we need guys to step up for him as receivers. Cameron Scadaboo is phenomenal. He just led you in receiving yards with 117. It was, it was over 40 yards more than the next guy. That, that can't continue to happen. 
as great as Cameron Scadaboo is. And there's no reason that it's, it's, it, it, there's, let me walk that back. It's, it's not the worst thing that he leads you in receiving yards for a game, but it's, it's so frustrating when you consider the body of work that ASU has had from their, from their pass catchers this year, wide receivers, tight ends, everything. It's got to get better, especially for a redshirt freshman quarterback. All right. That's enough negative talk. We're going to go ahead and transition to the final part of the podcast. We got two takeaways and I got two areas that I want to see Arizona state working on over the bye week What needs to be fixing? What needs fixing rather? That's what we're going to focus on as we begin to close out this edition of the Locked On Sun Levels podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Game Time is another one of our sponsors here. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks, and it makes getting tickets for your favorite live event, not just sports, even easier than before. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste your time searching through thousands of tickets. Game Time Picks curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concert, comedy, theater events, and more. Their all-in pricing feature will allow you to see the total up front. There's no surprise fees at checkout. You can get a panoramic view of your seat in the app before you buy. That way you know what to expect when you arrive. My favorite part of Game Time is their lowest price guarantee where they will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. And of course, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-E. O N C O L L E G E locked on college for twenty dollars off. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. One last time, wherever you're getting those shows, hit like, hit subscribe, and turn on notifications so you get that update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you all for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. A special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Let's wrap this bad boy up. We've been going quite a while. I will make this short and sweet. Two takeaways for this team after this game. Number one, this team, as I said at the top of the show, needed to be humbled. They needed to get refocused heading into the bye week. Cameron Scadaboo said it perfectly in the post-game press conference. He said, look, we've got three seasons this year because we've got two bye weeks and it breaks up our, our season into four games, four games, four games. So first season is over. You went three and three and one in your first season. That's great. By week, you come back, you're fresh, you're zero and zero for the second season of the 2024 year. We got stuff to work on. We got stuff to figure out. It's absolutely right. There's a lot of really good things that are going that are going well for the Sun Devils this year. They're not three and one by accident. They they're they're a good football team. Do not let one loss derail your thoughts of this team. This is a good football team. Just had a loss and a loss that showed that they've got work to do. That's why your next takeaway here is you need to find your current weaknesses and you need to get them figured out right now. To me, the three biggest glaring weaknesses on this team, the offensive line committing penalties, and you need more options in the passing game. Offensive line. I, I don't know what's going on. I, I, I really don't. It, it is a really good, talented group. It's well coached. Something's not working. So you need to figure out what's wrong, where the where the miscommunication is, where the disconnect is from, from the talent and the coaching to the product that we see on the field. It's got to get better. Penalties. That's really easy. Stop committing penalties. This is supposed to be a disciplined football team. And yet... On Saturday, I felt like I was watching a Dennis Erickson team or a Herm Edwards team. It was certainly not a Todd Graham team. This needs to be a much more disciplined unit. So, yeah, there were some plays that you got hosed on, especially that Keith Abney penalty, man. Like, I'm still pissed off about that. But 
there were really, really bad penalties. The ASU just shot himself in the foot. That's got to improve. You can't do that. You're going to lose football games like what you just did. And then options in the passing game. I love Jordan Tyson. ASU only wants to use him in one way right now, unfortunately. So if you're going to do that, then you need to find guys that fill other roles. Xavier Guillory looked perfect in the intermediate passing game. Let's keep that going. Let's get Shaman Mateer to, to really step up and take that next step because he, He's right there. He's teetering on breakout status. He's right there. He's dipping the toe in. We need him to be able to take that step forward because there's there's a lot of potential here with Siobhan Mater. This dude could be Hemothy. We just got to get him there. Hopefully they can figure out some other stuff in the passing game as well. Finally, let's wrap this up. Two things that need fixing after this game. Similar to when we hand out game balls, this will be what we do in a loss is we're going to talk about what needs fixing the two things that need fixing in this game. We have got to improve the offensive line and we have got to cut down on the dumb penalties. Figure those two things out. You've got a week to do it because of the bye week Then you're back home hosting Kansas, hopefully for a chance to get your first win in big 12 conference play. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a three and one Sun Devils team. They had a bad loss. I, I, I wouldn't call it embarrassing in the grand scheme of things, but on Saturday, it was certainly embarrassing. Bottom line, it's it's okay. They're three and one. They were bound to lose eventually. It sucks that they lost, but it's a good thing they did it now, going into a bye week so that they know what to focus on to get better. That was the good. That was the bad. That was the takeaways, and those are the things that need fixing. What did you guys think of this game? What, what did you take away positive from this game? Let me know in the comments. You can always hit me up on Twitter as well at RichieBrads36, the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Wherever you're getting your shows, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you get that update whenever we post new content. I appreciate each and every single one of you for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. A special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. We will be back again tomorrow as we go ahead and hand out some grades for the offense, the defense, the coaching, and the overall performance of this team. I will see you tomorrow for that grade. Till then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Devils.